Hello and welcome to part 2 on my series Weird Facts Regarding the Moon. Um, now if you haven't watched part 1, I suggest that you watch part 1 because um, it's, all, it's all rather interesting stuff uh, regarding the moon and part 1 I was talking about the uh, mystery in science with regards to the size of the moon, um, with the moon being a satellite of the earth and um, it's very mysterious as to the size, it's not normal um, if we compare the size of the earth satellite with other planet satellites I mean the moon itself is larger than the planet Pluto okay so the planet Pluto has been demoted to a dwarf planet but a planet nonetheless and um, here we have the moon and it's extremely large and uh, you'd expect a satellite of the earth um, to be um, a small 30 mile in diameter satellite whereas the diameter of the moon is 2160 miles um, so I was talking about that in part one I also mentioned about the fact you know just a bit of a recap here before we move on um, that the the moon is actually older than the earth there are rocks on the moon that are dated a billion years older than the rocks on the earth um, now the dust that the rocks sit on on the moon are even older than that they're actually a billion years older than the rocks so the theory that the moon came out of the earth doesn't stand up scientifically because um, the moon is evidently far older than the earth so you know this whole um, big whack theory is the scientists come up with that the uh, moon has come from the earth it's just um, it just doesn't hold much weight and uh, all scientists are of the opinion now that the uh, that the current hypotheses and theories regarding the moon are not considered remotely watertight. Um, so now we're going to move on to some more exciting information that just kind of makes this whole moon thing even more mysterious. And we're talking about extraordinary coincidences. And just once again, I'm taking my information from um, the book uh, written by David Dyke. Uh, the human race, get off your knees, the lion sleeps no more. And uh, David Icke read a book that I myself read several years ago called Who Built the Moon, written by um, co-authors uh, Christopher Knight and Alan Butler. And when I read this book a few years, years ago, I was astounded, because um, I thought, whoa, you know, that is some serious shit, you know? Um, so anyway, let's, let's, I'm, I'm going to read, like, I'm going to have to read word for word um, what I'm about to, the information I'm about to impart to you in, in, in this part two video because <clears throat> it, it's quite, it's quite um, uh, what's the word, well it's very precise, very specific, there's no, there's no uh, other way to put it, so I'm just going to like read through and we'll stop at various points. Um, now Christopher Knight and Alan Butler reveal in Who Built the Moon many remarkable mathematical connections with regard to the moon, earth and the sun using the base number of 10. These mathematical synchronicities only work with these three bodies and not with any of the other planets or moons in the solar system. The moon is 400 times smaller than the sun and at a total, sorry, and at a solar eclipse it is 400 times closer to Earth. This makes the moon appear from Earth to be the same size as the sun, hence a total eclipse. The moon has astonishingly synchro sorry, the moon has astonishing synchronicity with the sun. The s when the sun is at its lowest and weakest in midwinter, the moon is at its highest and brightest and the reverse occurs in midsummer. Both set at the point on the horizon at the equinoxes and at the opposite point of the solstices. Uh, what are the chances that the moon would naturally find an orbit so perfect that it would cover the earth? Sorry, cover the sun at an eclipse and appear from Earth to be the same size. Okay, let's just stop there for a second. Okay, so I was talking about in my last video about two mainstream theories regarding the moon. The first mainstream theory is the double whack theory or the, the, the big whack 
theory whereby a, a, a Mars type planet ploughed into the Earth and the moon just popped out and, and was within the. Um, it, it, it's just not right. Okay. So the other mainstream theory is that the moon just kind of came about, it just kind of drifted towards the Earth and was in the Earth's gravitational field and therefore became a satellite of the Earth. Now, it just so happens that the moon positioned itself and b began its orbit in just the right position and the right distance from the Earth that the that these mathematical synchronicities just were there by chance. I don't think so. Well, what is then? What What is the answer? Well, I'm not going to talk about that yet. I'm going to save that to the end. At the very, very end, I'm going to talk about my personal conclusions that I draw. But this series is, is it's facts, weird facts regarding the moon. So I'm just talking about facts regarding the moon. Now, these are facts. You know? I'm not drawing conclusions from these facts, but I, I will offer my personal conclusions later on um, in a later video. Um, but, you know, I just put it to you, how could the moon just kind of drift nicely into place so that the moon appears to be the same size from the Earth as what the sun is? And that they are so exact in their you know, by appearance that, that they that, that the moon will completely, totally eclipse the sun. Okay, but it doesn't end there. Let's just let's just continue on with these coincidences, right? Okay. So, uh, what are the chances that the alignments would be so perfect at the equinoxes and solstices? The moon always shows the same side or face to the Earth during the period when we can see it. We never see what the what is the dark or far side of the moon from the Earth? This is due to the synchronicity of the moon's rotation. It rotates on its axis in about the same time it takes to orbit the Earth. And this means that the same face is turned towards Earth at all times. The moon's rotation is extremely slow compared to Earth's. And in the time it takes for the moon to complete just one turn, Earth will rotate more than 27 times. Earth rotates at a speed 400 times faster than the moon and turns 40,000 kilometers on its axis in a day to the moon's 400. Now you'll notice the number 400 coming up all the time. What's that about? 400, all the time. 400, 400, 400. Okay, let's read on. Earth spins 366.259 times during one orbit of the Sun and the polar circumference of the Earth is 366.175 times bigger than that of the Moon. The polar circumference of the Moon is 27.31% the size of the Earth and the Moon marks, sorry, and the Moon makes 27.396 turns per orbit of the Earth. Knight and Butler say that if you multiply the circumference of the moon by that of the earth, the result is 436,669,140 kilometers. If this number is divided by 100, it becomes 436,669 kilometers. The circumference of the sun, correct, to 99.9%. Did you hear that? Okay, let's read on. If you divide the circumference of the sun by that of the moon and multiply by 100, you get the circumference of the earth. Divide the size of the sun by the size of the earth and multiply by 100 and you get the size of the moon. The writers correctly conclude that the number play involved with the earth, moon, sun system is nothing less than staggering and the moon appears to <clears throat> have been inserted into the sun earth relationship with the accuracy of the proverbial swiss watchmaker now what's that about i mean whoa 
I mean, th th this is this is this is um, this is just remarkable. Okay, and I'm just getting warmed up because there's going to be more videos in this series, weird facts regarding the moon, and um, and, and and it just gets more and more interesting as time goes on. But everything aside, those mathematical coincidences, that mathematical harmony with the sun, earth, moon system relationship is just absolutely mind-blowing. And I said in my first video that I could entitle this series, right, if I wanted an elaborate title for this series of videos, I could entitle it 100% proof of the existence of a creator god or 100% proof of the existence of extraterrestrials or if I wanted to be a little more vague I could say 100% proof of the existence of an intelligent um, force more intelligent than us human beings but I'm not because then we enter into speculation and speculation is your personal um, duty once the facts are uh, uh, are presented and uh, I will offer my personal interpretation as I told you just a, a few moments ago later on when we've laid everything on the table um, but uh, yeah I mean come on one thing I think we can rule out right when all is said and done before we speculate as to the origin of the moon who built the moon who put the moon there right we can rule one thing out if we do a process of elimination. We can rule out that the fact that the moon just randomly drifted into place. I think I think that can be ruled out. Okay, thank you, and uh, I look forward to seeing you in part three. Yeah, baby.